Tottenham have had a topsy-turvy start to the Premier League season. They currently sit in the Premier League table in 8th place. 9 games played, 4 wins, 1 draw, 4 losses. And apart from the Europa League campaign, which has been a solid 9 points out of 9, this season has been a right old roller coaster for the Lily Whites. And after our recent result against Crystal Palace, which was probably one of the worst results of the season, today on the Sunny Talk Spurs YouTube channel, we're going to dissect this game even further and outline some of the biggest problems Ange Postacoglu needs to solve at Tottenham Hotspur. But if you are new around here, as I say, to the Sunny Talk Spurs YouTube channel, then drop us a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and also get down in the comments below and outline what what Tottenham's biggest problem is. Now I know what most of you are going to answer that question with, it's Daniel Levy, but we're going to talk about Tottenham on the pitch because that's where some of the issues are to our eyes as Tottenham fans. And after that Palace game, I mean, that is one of the most angry I've been after a Tottenham result. And I'm not usually like this, as people will know if you subscribe already to the channel. I'm a big fan of Ange Postacoglu, but this Palace game was a bit of a fly in the ointment. It was... Not what we're used to under Ange Postacoglu. Severe lack of fight. And that's going to be one of the issues we're going to highlight today. But without further ado, I want to just get this off and running with problem number one. So Tottenham currently sit four points above 16th place Everton. And just 13 points from nine games of Ange Postacoglu's side in the Premier League. It's just not good reading, is it? It just doesn't really bode well for that. And part of this has been Tottenham's away form because we have not had a good performance away in the Premier League, probably since we beat Aston Villa, who, funny enough, we face next. And Tottenham's away form reads like this. The last 13 Premier League games away from home, we've drawn three, we've won two, we've lost eight and collected nine points from a possible 39. And to be a big team or a consistent team, which is what we want to achieve first and foremost, you have to get those points away from home. It's just a given. Arsenal do it. City do it. Chelsea are doing it. Liverpool are doing it. But we're not. And that's where, you know, the gaps in the league are coming. And we've seen it from Manchester United. Not being good enough away from home under Eric Ten Hag. So what happens? He got the chop. And that's the risk that Ange Postecoglou is going to get if he doesn't really change this away form around. I know it's a given that you think, you know, just improve away from home. But there's a mentality when we're playing away from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, something changes. Because we saw against West Ham at home, we went 1-0 down, but with the help of the crowd and through swashbuckling play, we ended up winning the game 4-1. But we go 1-0 down against Palace, who, you know, they've got a good fan base, they've got a good crowd. We just didn't know how to hack it, did we? And it just makes you think, when we play Galatasaray away from home in the Europa League, some of these players could turn to jelly. Problem number two was evident in this game against Crystal Palace. Some of the passing was absolutely diabolical and mainly passing out from the back. I mean, there are some stages where you just think, just hit along. It does sound really dinosaur of me, but just sometimes you just have to turf it up the pitch and hit it along. The way we pass out from the back against Crystal Palace was diabolical because they were just really going at us. And that's another one of my points that I'll bring, you know, I'll talk about in a bit more detail in a bit. But it's the fact that we just didn't know what to do with it. You know, Vicario passed out to Romero for the goal. Romero chips it up in the air. And, you know, I'm a bit old school sometimes with defending. Two rules I learned when I was younger. Never pass it across your own box and never let it bounce. And it happens there. Romero chips it over to Van der Ven. Van der Ven lets it bounce. He gives it away as a little flick. And Mateta puts the ball in the back of the net. That's a massive issue for me. If you're not sure, and we seem to do this a lot in our, like, the fullbacks, Pedro Poro and Adogi, sometimes just don't want to clear their lines. It's okay to do that. And I know people say, Ange, plan B and all that. There's nothing wrong with just clearing your lines sometimes and just setting back that high line, getting back in formation. It's just a slight tweak, and I think that would give Tottenham, you know, just an absolute edge on the opposition. Arsenal do it. They're playing a bit of that dark arts football. Why can't we? So I alluded to it there, but problem number three is our, you know, lack of being able to handle other teams' press. We're a good pressing team. Dominic Solanke's come into the team and has been very good in the press. 
But Crystal Palace pressed us into the absolute abyss, didn't they? They knew what to do. They set up in a way which was like, if we go at Tottenham and press them, they won't, one, be able to press us, and two, they won't be able to pass it out. And that really links to problem number two, doesn't it? Because if a team isn't able to play that free-flowing style like a lot of us do, like, you know, Southampton, they've not been able to do it because people are closing them down, making them make mistakes. And that's what happens because the idea is, Ange Postecoglou wants a fluid Tottenham team who can pass out from the back, break the lines and all that sort of thing. But we're making mistakes. Our defenders are making mistakes. Our midfielders are making mistakes too often. And sometimes you've just got to keep it simple. When it pays off, it looks really good. But there are some times where you've got to switch up slightly so that you're not coming across this issue. So as I said as well, our last game before Palace was against West Ham. They sat very deep. They played a sort of five at the back at some stages and we were able to break them down. But Palace did it. And we couldn't. And that's another issue. That's problem number four. I'm losing count of all these problems. But the way that Tottenham, if a team sits deep, it's not being able to change it up. And I mean in the sense of we don't make or take many long-range shots. They're lacking in our football. It's sort of if, you know, the fullbacks aren't overlapping, un underlapping. If one of our midfielders, like Kulisevsky or Madison, has a bad game... We're not willing to, like, you know, really switch it up. And I think in this game, especially against Crystal Palace, I think we didn't need Madison and Kulisevsky. Saar should have sort of been started in this team because we saw that work again West, against West Ham. We needed more legs in that midfield, and Saar provided it. And there are those cases where Ange has to change up that team depending on the opposition we're playing. And that's not so much changing his style, but that's changing the, you know, the personnel who can possibly break down the team. We've now got a few wingers who can be more direct. Mikey Moore, you know, some when he comes back from injury. Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner does not work. Richardson could work out on the wing instead. I feel like we need to really rotate that team a little bit more to see what it can offer. Because when we are playing at our top level, we're unstoppable in attack. And I just feel like if we're able to just sort of tweak it against these teams we know are going to sit deep. We love playing against maybe some of the bigger opposition because they are going to give us chances because of how open they can be and, you know, on the front foot. But when a team is going to sit back like they do and they have a bit of quality like Palace do, it just isn't going to work. Problem number five, we need to get Solanke more into the game. There were chances in this game where we're hitting it long. Solanke is like Kane. He likes to drop deep. He likes to distribute from deep as well. He can hold it up well. I just feel like we're not serving him up any good balls to get on the end of, whether it's crossing, whether it's, you know, zipped balls across the area. I feel like if we got Solanke more into the game, it would help everyone around him. It would help Madison. It would help Kulisevsky. It would help the wingers. I'm just not seeing... And I see, like, it's very lazy because I think Solanke was probably the best player on the pitch for Spurs in this fixture. I'm seeing a lot of neutrals and rivals feel like, what a waste, 65 million, da, da, da. I think that's lazy analysis. I feel like if you're dissing Solanke at this stage, you've got to screw your head on. I think he has been a really good signing so far for Spurs. He just needs to be in the game more. And that is down to his teammates. He can't always drop deep and pick it up because Kane was doing that a lot. And we want him to be in the area for, you know, to be on the end of chances. Because Solanke is always the best when he's between the goalposts and able to poach. Because we saw that for Bournemouth last year. And now is my final problem, number six. I don't know why I did that first. I meant six. But this was addressed by Ange Postacoglu in his post-match press conference. So I'm going to play that clip first. Uh, fair to say, uh, look, it wasn't, it, it was just a... A game that turned into, which wasn't a surprise, a bit of a battle and a lot of stops, starting, standing around, and uh, we didn't deal with that really well at all. We didn't uh, sort of get the grips with uh, just the nature of, uh, you know, what was transpiring out there. And like I said, turned into a bit of a battle, and um, yeah, they dealt with it better than we did. No, it was a different game. It wasn't like, it was just like I said, it was just just a game where we needed to sort of stay composed, uh, you know, not sort of, you know, fall into the trap of trying to play the game that you know, ultimately, uh, you know, Palace uh, wanted to play. And as I said, it turned to a game where just, you know, it wasn't, it was just a, a battle after battle and duels and stops, starts, waiting around. And like I said, we, we need to be uh, a lot more clear-headed about how we deal with that uh, rather than sort of fall into the trap of trying to, you know, 
对我为的出来。No, I mean, yeah, you know, it was always good. Look, I mean, it was a big game for Palace. They were always going to, you know, be desperate to, to to get a win today. And when that happens, you know, they, they're, they're going to be, you know, look, I like the referee. I, look, I just thought there was a lot of standing around today, which I hate. I've said that before, but I guess it was just the, the nature of uh, the way the game went. Um, look, it's just part of the process. The more you expose players to these kind of things, um, you know, you offer them the feedback and then, uh, yeah, you uh, hopefully deal with, with it better the next time. If you want to play that sort of game, but there's another way of dealing with it as well. But just, like I said, staying... A bit more composed and um, not falling into the trap of turning into that sort of game because. Well, no, I don't want to play them at their own game. We, we, what we try and do is get people to adjust to play to our game. Now, look, some of it is out of your control because, like I said, they're they're obviously um, you know going to be um, pretty aggressive in their approach and which is not a surprise. And then, you know, how the referee deals with that, not so much in terms of the challenges, but, you know, the whole stoppages and taking their time. All that's out of our control, but I just felt when we had control of things, we could have dealt with it better. We ended up doing some silly things, giving away silly fouls and losing our composure, which just adds to that, you know, that sort of game and you can't just get any traction. So um, I just think we directed our sort of frustration in the wrong way rather than sort of dealing it with the way we should have. Yeah, well, look, I mean, it was, like I said, it wasn't really a great game for anybody out there from our perspective. Um, um, but, you know, Mikey's, um, you know, he's, he's, every time he's out there, he's, I think he'll, he'll, be a better player and the more we can get him out there in the right kind of uh, sort of environment then uh, he'll keep thriving so um, yeah I'm sure he's he'll learn a lot today but um, like I said today you know the kind of team we want to be we we or the way we want to play um, you know we need a lot to be a lot more um, sort of composed in the way we deal with certain things out there um, to not let the game get out of out of control. Yeah, look, I, I I think even before then, I, I think there was we could have dealt with those situations better, but it was a poor goal, you know, and we should be better at that. We, we shouldn't be conceding like that. Um, you know, there was there was other solutions out there, um, and again, we even in that moment we didn't have to lose our composure. You know, it just seems like we, um, you know, we, we, we kind of wanted everything to sort of run smoothly and we know it doesn't, so especially in a game like today and there's still ways you can sort of overcome that. Um, but it was a poor goal to concede because, you know, the game was always an arm wrestle. It was never going to be, like I said, one with bags of chances or really open. So um, to concede like that was disappointing. Tottenham are lacking leadership on the pitch. They're lacking fight. They lack so much fight in this game. Palace wanted it more. I didn't see any Tottenham player grab the game by the scruff of the old neck. It was very, very poor. And there's a severe lack of leaders. You look at our, uh, what do they call it now? The sort of senior leadership team. It consists of Son, who's the club captain. And then you have the vice captains of Romero and James Madison. Are they a good enough trio? You're going to have to let me know in the comments down below. Son is amazing. He's one of the best players I've seen in a Spurs shirt. But is he a leader? Is he a captain? I'm not so sure. James Madison, is he too emotional to be a captain? He might be a senior player, as in like older. But is he a leader? I'm not sure. Same with Romero. Romero's been very, very poor this year. I'm surprised how poor he's been. He's not really led that defence like a vice captain, like a senior player should. So I've been very disappointed. And there's a lot of Tottenham fans who are talking similar chat to what I am 
You know, there's some pl- some fans who are more emotional and negative about the team, but like this caller on Talksport, just outlining a lot of issues that are going on in the club currently. Let's go back to the phone lines then, and due to the request from six oh five, we said we spoke about Spurs' defeat. I've got a Spurs fan. Oh, Rob, who's a Spurs fan, he joins us on the show. Evening, Rob. Hello, mate. You're right. Well, oh, probably as a, a <laughs> frustrated and annoyed as you, mate. Spurs there, just to, to ruin your weekend. I've had a great weekend, and it comes 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Hey, Spurs are here, just to ruin it for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, standard weekend for me, mate, to be fair. <laughs> uh, it's been like that since I was probably in my early teens in 2008. So Exactly. Uh, today, though, it was, it was yeah, probably yeah. one of the worst performances of the season, alongside our performance yeah. against Coventry in the Cup, which I thought was rubbish. <laughs> Um, yeah, what went wrong? Uh, mate, to be honest, um, I'm a little bit baffled as how to feel as a Spurs fan. I mean, I can say I'm used to disappointment, so it doesn't let me, it doesn't really ruin, ruin the weekend for me. <laughs> I think the worst thing for me is a lot of people, we have the discussion, I, I'm quite active on Twitter as well, and there's many people, you get the Ange haters on a regular basis talking about the open play system. Um, I think the more frustrating thing for me was the fact that in the Europa League, the squad that we actually selected, I think that the only, I think the only first, uh, the first team player in that squad on the day was Benton Core, uh, I think, uh, in terms of the starting lineup. Um, so naturally, for me, in the in the middle of the week, I was feeling that it was good that we got rest of the players. Um, and just likes to speak about us being one of the fittest teams in the league. Then we go away to Crystal Palace and then we put in a performance like that, considering a lot of our first team has actually have been rested throughout midweek. Um, so I, I'm a little bit baffled as to how to feel, um, whether it's the place, the, the, the blame is on the manager currently or whether it's on the squad. Um, you know, I, I saw Vicario come out uh, full time and he put his hands up. But then we do also looking back at the replays. I know it was offside, but he also did make a mistake for the ball to go under him. Yeah. Uh, for the goal that actually eventually went in. So I'm a little bit torn uh, as a Spurs fan, to be honest. Um, I just don't, I can't really put my finger on it, in all honesty. Yeah, so. I, I don't know how to feel about it. You're right, because I looked at that starting lineup, seen Mikey Moore was there, and I was like, brilliant. He yeah. deserved to play. I was really excited to see him play. I just yeah. think that, as I said to Pards earlier on, I just think if people play, you know, a high press against us and they put us under pressure and they make us make mistakes, which we were vulnerable to, and we can't get out and play our football. I just think it nullifies us. Yeah, 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 100%. Um, I think the same situation with Brighton. Um, exact we, same situation. We, the first half, they let us run riot. And as soon as they uh, didn't let us I press, mean, we, we lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, I went on Twitter right after we lost the game, and there was a lot of people blaming, blaming Ange directly for the loss. But then I, I thought to myself, one second, Destiny Adogi, um, he, I think he was at fault for probably two of the goals. And I'd never normally one of these people to bash players, sit there and slate an individual player or the team itself. I don't, I, I don't want to. Um, but, you know, for the last couple of weeks, a lot of people have been calling for Mikey Moore to start. Um, a lot of fans are getting on the bandwagon and saying, look, he's, he's been putting in good shifts in the Europa League and uh, a few segments here and there across a couple of seasons. But it's, it's hard because then a lot of, once again, after the 90 minutes had ended, people said... Mikey Moore, he didn't have a great performance, but then I was thinking, one second, the whole of the 90 minutes was shocking. Romero's been poor. Van de Ven's clearance for the for the goal uh, was dreadful. Uh, Vicario at points, um, it's not commanding enough. There's just, it's once again, it's the same Spurs performance, mate. Um, every, you know, you get your hopes up, you go on a little, you, you go on a decent streak and then it ends up in disappointment. And I think unless there's there's just players in the team like Kulisevsky didn't perform um, and, he's, week, and he's been so he's been so good of, for, for me going oh, into mate, that oh, game yeah. today he's been probably our best player this season and he was just nullified today but you're going to have to let me know in the comments down below what do you think is the biggest issue at Tottenham Hotspur I've outlined a few there is there something different as I say let me know comments down below and if you like the video I know it's a bit of one of those ones where it's a bit but it's constructive criticism because I'm still positive I'm still happy with Ange Postecoglou at Spurs. I want him to stay. I want him to build something. But there's always room for improvement. You know, we've seen it with Arteta. You know, he got slated. And look at him now. In title races year in, year out. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And until next time, which will be a video reaction to the Manchester City result. God help us. I'll see you guys then. Ciao.